So I went out a bit in the early 2000s, but then I became really domesticated and just sort of got into this little cocoon for a little over a decade, um, which provided me with sort of a different perspective on DJing now versus DJing then. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of like a Rip Van Winkle kind of situation, you know, where like if you're gone for a very long time and you come back and you want to do it again, you, you're amazed at how much has changed in those intervening 10, 12 years, not just in, in terms of the music, but also in terms of the role that um, club life has in the gay and lesbian community, which is to say that it's nowhere near as important as it used to be. So you have, what, six gay bars operating in Boston now or so, six or seven maybe, and, and when I stopped going out, there might have been as many as the 20 or 22. I mean, Sporters was still around. Um, 119. 119 was still around. The 1270, which had after it was Maximum Security. I stayed with it through Maximum Security into, um, into its life as Tattoo. And then what it became, one thing after Tattoo, it became Quest. I was with it when it was Tattoo for a little while, and I forget how many years after it was Maximum Security, maybe even two years as Maximum Security, I, mean, I want to say. And then it became um, Tattoo, and I got fired from there because I was supposed to have a bar shift, and I was in Atlantic City with a friend who um, didn't, who, who was my transportation and kind of turned into a whole uh, nightmare about getting back. Um, but I didn't really care because I wasn't really happy there. It wasn't really that interesting to me. I wasn't doing much that was that interesting. Um, so I stopped working when it was tattooed probably in 94, 95 as well, I want to say. Um, and then it became Quest for a little while, which sort of became like an alternative kind of like kids sort of place, if I remember right, like a club kid kind of place for a little while. Um, so there were a lot of bars that were still operating at the time that I stopped going out. And then in the 10, 12 years that I stopped going out much and playing, a lot of those bars disappeared. And also in its place became this, um, what people have to do now is sort of create their own nights. DJs have to create their own nights. They have to sort of market them on Facebook and they have to um, beg all their friends to go. Portlandia had a great uh, sketch about this not that long ago when you come to my DJ night and it was like everywhere that they went in the city people were passing them flyers saying come to my DJ night and they were all kinds of places they weren't primarily the biggest difference is that they're not really in gay bars per se anymore I mean Plastique is at the Midway Cafe which is a neighborhood bar in JP Little Divey has a queer karaoke on Thursdays but then has like live music most of the other nights um, and then the hip hop night on Wednesdays and so the idea of the gay bar as like a focus of community life just doesn't really exist anymore. Certainly not here. Um, and not, not even as much in places like New York. I mean, again, that, that sea change in, in, in going out um, was fueled by things like the internet, right? And um, apps like Grindr and things like that where now people don't, you know, need the anonymity or the... Um, the venue to meet people like all that's been kind of taken out of the equation to some degree um, which is really too bad I mean you know we could get that's a much longer discussion about the need for face-to-face -face contact and meeting strangers that you know uh, in an actual physical environment versus just meeting them on your phone or whatever